young adult literature, um, all it is at this point is just it's just a capital intensive subculture. Right. And um, when you think about why people might have financial you know, motives for entering one subculture over another, let's say um, one one career choice over another. And to the extent that some careers do also spawn subcultures, you know, this would be an example of such. Basically, like, you, you want a reason, right, for cultural objects to exist. Right. But I haven't seen anything thus far, like with all these like blow ups of young adult literature over the last few years. Like anything of value being written, anything of value being said, like I call this a capital int- intensive subculture because ultimately like they need like the subculture needs to produce one thing, right? Which is books, right? It needs to eventually, whether or not you're arguing on Twitter, like whatever, uh, if there's like cancellations in the publishing industry, the bottom line is you eventually do need to produce books, if the books that are being produced are of no value and the people having these conversations are the ones producing these books of no value, um, this is nothing more than, than just kind of like, you know, an arm of capitalism trying to, you know, find yet another niche, trying to find yet uh, another way to leverage yet another set of like random interests. In this case, it's like, you know, young adult literature tends to be like very, um, you know, fantasy driven, very like, you know, like st- 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 stuff that you would normally expect, like the most famous uh, names, right? Harry Potter, so on and so forth. Um, but if you're producing nothing of value, like you're, you're just, you're just generating, you know, uh, an item, right? That people say has value, right? Uh, and merely because of saying it enough, like people give it a value, it becomes part of the conversation. So that's the first part, right? Before I get into anything with young adult literature, I want to put it out there that, you know, not unlike pretty much any other part of publishing, um, uh, the stuff that's being released in young adult literature is primarily just like trash, 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 right? So, and it's interesting because like, uh, you know, uh, w- when it comes to <sighs> some subcultures, let's say, are more competitive than others. Like I've often brought up the example of hip hop, right? Like, you know, rap is uh, uh, pretty hyper competitive, which which attracts me because it's always nice to have groups of people that say, you know, uh, this is an art form. There is a good and a bad in the middle. Here's how to improve. Here's how to, you know, um, you know, like, like get better at, the, at this craft. But, uh, especially with like writing and especially with like, you know, liberally hegemonic, um, uh, like art forms of late, people don't want to argue about good and bad and better and worse. Right. Um, and this is especially true, like it coincides very weirdly with the acceleration of like the dual economy, with the acceleration of yet more cultural objects that become just like things for consumers to, you know, uh, uh, indulge in. Um, you know, as that is happening on the one hand, we also have this like extreme dropping off of like if you ever want to discuss the fucking intrinsic value of a book, right, of these like instruments of capital – People start to bitch like, oh, how dare you? And of course, like, you know, to, to protect yourself against that, to protect against somebody scrutinizing your book too closely, if you belong to a preferred category, let's say that you're, you know, a non-white writer, let's say that you're also a woman, let's say that you, you know, you're gay, let's say that you have uh, multiple disabilities, um, you could, you know, always sort of fend off criticism now in the modern world. By, you know, keep sort of pulling the identity card, making sure that there's enough people that are also in like, you know, a woke capital culture that can, you know, support you in some way, either buy your books or retweet or whatever it might be. You form alliances in this way. But it's all because of this, right? It's all because evaluating the intrinsic value of these books is so... Like it, it's, it's, it runs so counter to like the motivations of, of any kind of capital intensive subculture, right? Um, you, you, you don't want to spend time evaluating, uh, uh, the innate value of a book that was just written, right? Um, uh, you want to pretend that everything is equal, uh, uh, and you, and, and the only time things are not equal is when, 
you establish like new places in the hierarchy. We've sucked out kind of like all the money that we could possibly suck out of Shakespeare, right? Of like, you know, dead white males more broadly, even like dead white women. Um, since that is like hard to, uh, uh, make money from any longer, especially since like, you know, academia has taken like a, a beating as well. And if this was like the sort of, you know, um, the final cry of academia, like, well, you know, uh, you kind of like lost your spot there. So now we have a new hierarchy, right? Now, now capital wants to subsume new shit. It wants to find new, new places to grow, new niches to fill. Uh, uh, you know, this is just what power wants, right? Um, so now, now, uh, we have hierarchies of like, we want to get, you know, black writers in. We want to get Latina writers in, Latinx, folks with an X. We want to, uh, 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 get all these new in categories. So essentially like out of thin air, right? When we think about cap, like capitalism creating value out of nothing, um, out of thin air, right? You have these categories of things. Like now you have books written by, you know, queer Marxists. Now you have books written by, you know, uh, Afro Latinas. Now you have books written, by, you know, whoever. Like there is now something to milk, right? There is something to milk now. So, um, we're not going to appraise really the value of the past, right? Whether these dead white males are even worthy of our time. We're just going to replace them with this new shit and it's going to be even harder to criticize because, you know, we are the uh, uh, dispossessed. Um, so th these are mostly worthless books that have been uh, released. Uh, and, and they're worthless because like instead of uh, leveraging genuine value, right? Like great writing that stands the test of time that everybody has something to learn from, uh, black or white, right? A uh, gay or straight, it doesn't matter. Um, right. The, 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 that, that's not how, that's not how the business model works, right? It's not something that has like innate value. So therefore people will flock to it. No, it's let's find a way to leverage people's emotions, right? If we could sort of have these groups, right? Whether it's like, hey guys, here's a genius idea. Let's have 50% of the people who vote for Democrats and 50% of the people exactly vote for Republicans and set up things in such a way where literally 50% of the time, it's either one group or the other, right? Uh, isn't that a genius idea? Here we're going to do, you know, uh, uh, something similar, right? Let, let's sort of, you know, cut people up into tribes, Let's sort sort of avoid what what is like the most obvious thing that should be discussed, which is, hey, um, are we going to start producing great literature finally? Does that fucking matter anymore? Right. So, if you want to go back in time and reevaluate whether or not Shakespeare is worthy over time, well, guess what? Like Dan Schneider has essays like that. He has uh the Wallace Stevens, um, and uh um. Uh, William Shakespeare face off where he's comparing the number of great poems by one or the other. And he concludes that, you know, modern writing has definitely gotten ahead of Shakespeare. So to the extent that there are still people out there that say things like Shakespeare is the greatest literary genius that has ever lived. Well, that has already been false for about a century at least. Um, and obviously more than that, right? Uh, uh, um, so. We, like we could do that. We could say like dead white males are are bullshit, right? The dead white male poetry that is in fact not as good as people say it is. We should not have that part of the culture. We should not celebrate it. It makes no sense. It's stupid, right? Because the bottom line needs to be great writing. But that's not what happened, right? Instead, we simply have you know uh, 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 capitalism fill, finding and therefore filling a new niche, right? We have, again, going back to Dan, uh, the economy of Pelf, right? And if Pelf is the only economy that you sort of know, well, if we're not going to talk about value, we're just going to, you know, change the skin color of this writer or that writer. Um, you know, suddenly we're back to the original problem, right? And it's a problem that, you know, woke capitalism, uh, uh says exists, but it, it, do it doesn't want to deal with in any kind of, you know, meaningful way, right? The problem is, hey, all this, old shit that we've been reading a lot of it isn't very good and it's not relevant to us let's replace it you know that that is never done in an honest way it's just replaced with stuff that is oftentimes even worse right uh, uh much less actually better um and, and finally uh um uh you know when it when it comes to 
why like wokeism has been like especially bad historically and stuff like education and like you know stuff that is specifically geared to like you know like young adult readers um it's very easy for anybody right we see uh, uh conservatives do this with like pizzagate shit right uh they they you know when they say that there's like a a, a cabal of pedophiles in, in in washington and um they're exploiting children like conservatives right they 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 would be up in arms about the exploitation of children in the same way that liberals naturally would have that feeling right children are you know the reason why people have these responses to you know children is like just naturally we're supposed to have a kind of you know um uh, a protective response right just if you think about it state of nature so if that's a state of nature but we live in modern society you know the question becomes if there's this force that is all powerful right called capital and uh, it, 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 like, how can it leverage you and your emotions and everything about you that hasn't been leveraged yet for some purpose? And children are going to be part of this calculus, right? If you have young adult literature and you could say something like, I am writing this book where I'm calling this person out or I'm trying to cancel this person because children are involved, because I, you know, believe in teens, because I, you know, like whatever the fuck. If you could say that and you have enough dumb fucks that will like, you know, pat you on the back. Um, that's a very good system to gain because most people are stupid, right? So they leverage emotion. They also leverage self-interest. Uh, people on, you know, young adult Twitter, if they're not, you know, ha- if they didn't already write a book that they're hoping becomes famous or if they are um, uh, not writing a book that they hope will become famous or planning a book or maybe they're somewhere, you know, like academics and they want to sort of, you know, uh, uh, climb that fucking ladder. Um, they all have, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a tons of motivated reasoning for taking the positions that they do. Right. It's, it's, it's mob rule. Um, uh, uh, there's a casino like environment where uh, Anybody at any given time could fucking strike it rich. Um, so you have kind of like the worst incentives, like all in one place. And then, of course, you have that mask, right? Children, because and that's the thing, like the kids that are involved in this stuff, like a lot of them, they don't want to be on YA Twitter because they're like, this has nothing to do with this. This is just adults like fucking, you know, trying to like, you know, get a better job or sell more books. Like this is clearly what's happening. Like kids could see that pretty uh, interestingly. Uh, but, you know, as the kids themselves get older, like they, they oftentimes like just go back to YA Twitter and then th- themselves become these like parasites as well um, as adults. Right. So, you know, like the, the adults are creating the conditions for that kind of uh, behavior down the line. Uh, but, you know, it's this casino like environment where like everybody wants to get rich. Um, everybody has like some kind of scheme. And because there's no actual like writing chops involved, uh, it's all just a, a bunch of people like on this, like, like the closest thing maybe is like, I, I can't imagine wokeism coming to like romance literature because it's so predicated on like, you know, stereotypical, you know, fantasies or whatever that are, you know, they're going to fall along, you know, archetype lines for like, you know, classic male female whatever uh sexual differentiation um uh but you know here you introduce children and you you have this kind of smoke screen right uh you have so much money like so much money is involved in kids right like uh and so much waste is involved in all that because like everybody like everybody like if if there's some place where you could get your fucking grubby hands on and multiply your wealth you're gonna fucking take it right and children are gonna be part of this equation too um so uh uh, uh anyway that was kind of like the, the 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 generic kind of introduction uh let me read now this article this is actually all the way back from 2017 i believe is it I think so. Um, so Kat Rosenfield, uh, so I, I told you guys before about Robert Wright. He has a pretty good show, The Wright Show, um, that he does. Uh, also has written some, some pretty, uh, uh, good books as well. Um, and she's like part of the kind of like that, I guess, media family. And, uh, she has her own show, uh, Feminine Chaos. And she's also a young adult writer. I haven't read her books, uh, or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, she's also a, a, a young adult writer. 
Um, and a few years ago, so this is 2017, before a lot of this like woke stuff like really hit the kind of mainstream, um, you'll see this playing out in similar ways, like, you know, three years ago and, e- and even before that, right? Cause she's already treat, treating this as a retrospective, right? That this has already been happening for a few years on Twitter, you know, ostensibly even before, uh, Donald Trump, right? So she wrote this, um, uh, article, um, uh, for Vulture called The Toxic Drama on YA Twitter. The young adult bo- books are being targeted in intense social media callouts, draggings, and pylons, sometimes before anybody's even read them. Um, so, okay, so just keep in mind, this is uh, the context for 2017. This is not 2020, you know, BLM era uh, woke cancellations. This is what's happening three years ago, more than three years ago at this point. The Black Witch, a de- debut young adult fantasy novel by Laurie Forrest, was still seven weeks from its May publication date, but positive buzz was already building with early reviews calling it, quote, an intoxicating tale of rebellion and star-crossed romance, quote, a massive page turner that leaves readers longing for more, and, quote, an uncompromising condemnation of prejudice and injustice. So... The hype train was derailed in mid-March, however. So she um, writes like this paragraph uh, without any kind of broader commentary. Now, personally, if I were writing this essay, and I know, you know, we're talking about like woke capital. We're talking like people getting leveraged in these ways. Like I, I don't know anything uh, else about Kat Rosenfield other than uh, she has this article in that show. But, um, uh, you know, I, the, the, you know, like... So far, like if I were writing this article, if I were reading this article, I, I would wonder, well, before we get anywhere else, right? Before we talk about how the hype train was derailed, I need to know just so I can contextualize myself, like in the world and in reality and know where I stand in relation to reality. I need to know whether or not this is bullshit praise. You know, is this like bullshit over the top praise or if it's accurate? Right. And the second question, of course, is, you know, even if it's accurate praise, uh, should anyone, in fact, blurbing for a book or writing a review ever say something like this book is an intoxicating tale of rebellion and star cross romance? Should anybody writing about literature anywhere ever say that this is a massive page turner that leaves readers longing for more or an uncompromising condemna- condemnation of prejudice, whatever? Like, this is such trite language and it's so silly and it's so over the top and it's so worthless, right? So first I would want to call out that. But again, you know, Kat Rosenfield is not me. She might not have uh, the same uh, uh, interest or values or aspirations. So whatever, she won't say that. But the other thing that uh, I would also wonder about again, like I said earlier, is whether or not this is accurate. Is The Black Witch a good book? Right. Um, whether or not we call it an intoxicating tale of. Is it worth reading? Is it a good book? And um, my answer, because I, I had to sort of like look this up beforehand because I was so curious myself. And because unfortunately, this question was not answered in this article. I looked up the, the, the Black Witch. It's a very generic. Uh, it looks like a very generic uh, uh, fantasy novel, uh, novel of some sort. Um, uh, yes, there's that kind of like, you know, uh, contemporary stuff with like all these, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, so-called races and conflict with one another, hating each other. But the writing is just very, very trite. Uh, it, I believe it starts with something like the, um, you know, uh, like I, I love the trees and they love me. Like it was supposed to be a, you know, a kind of like elf type creature that's like, you know, has a bond with the four. So just, just very trite presentation. Um, uh, I, I read like two chapters of it. Definitely not worth, uh, anybody continuing to read. I would be shocked if it gets any better. And certainly this is bullshit praise and it's badly phrased bullshit that, you know, uh, calls to mind, you know, the kind of writing in the black witch. So. I want to get that out of the way um, since uh, we do think is a little differently on this stream compared to maybe how Kat Rosenfield would prefer to do things herself, right? Because this is her article. The hype train was derailed in mid-March, however, by Shauna Sinyard, a bookstore employee and blogger who writes primarily about YA and had a different take. Quote, the Black Witch is the most dangerous offensive book I have ever read. 
she wrote in a nearly 9,000 word review. Wow. Imagine writing 9,000 words on, I think my uh, Ben Shapiro piece was like 12,000 words, but that's like an entire guy's career. We're talking about uh, a shitty novel. The blast of the novel as an end-to-end mess of unadulterated bigotry. It was ultimately written for white people. It was written for the type of white person who considers themselves to be not racist and thinks that they deserve recognition and praise for treating people of color like they are actually human. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if like this book in terms of its like positive, feel good, you know, racial sensitivity messages. Uh, I'm sure it gets trite and pandering enough that you could actually say that it's clearly written for white people, clearly written by a white person, right? Clearly is by a white person that wants to be celebrated. I, th- I think, you know, uh, it's perfectly reasonable to assume that uh, a, a book that is as, as trite as, as uh, this book is in many places um, that you could, you know, make this kind of criticism about. But the problem is we never get to the writing and the specific examples of what she lifts are just like, you know, literally wrong. The Black Witch centers on a girl named Eloran who has been raised in a stratified society where other races, including Selkies, Fae, Wolfmen, <laughs> etc., are considered inferior at best and enemies at worst. But when she goes off to college, she begins to question her beliefs and ideological transformation she's still working on when she joins with the rebellion in the last of the novel's 600 pages. It's the first of a series. One hopes that Ellerin will be more woke in book two. It was this premise that led Senior to slam Black Witch as, quote, racist, ableist, homophobic, and written with no marginalized people in mind. In a review that consi- consisted largely of pull quotes featuring the book's racist characters saying or doing racist things. Here's a representative excerpt, an offending sentence juxtaposed with Singer's commentary. Page 163, quote, The Celts are not a pure race like us. They're more accepting of intermarriage, and because of this, they're hopelessly mixed. End quote. So, 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 uh, first, like, as like a racial critique, no matter where this is going, this is pretty fucking bad, isn't it? Like imagine this being an actual piece of dialogue. The Celts are not a pure race like us. They're more accepting of intermarriage. And because of this, we're hopelessly mixed. Imagine that being like uh, uh, turned into a lesson for a kid. But, you know, so the problem, of course, is, is not like that fucked up writing that could very well end up being, in fact, pandering. So this um, uh, Sinyard, uh, Shauna Sinyard, when she read that line, this was response. Yes, you just read that with your own two eyes. This is one of the times my, do- my jaw dropped in horror and I had to walk away from this book. So, you know, uh, uh, again, like, like, like Kat Rosenfield said, like uh, a racist character saying something racist Right, which you're not supposed to sympathize with, right? You're supposed to be like, oh, this is bad. Um, and she's saying, wow, this character is saying something racist, even though we're supposed to, you know, uh, 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 not, sim- not sympathize with that character. Um, uh, this is problematic in and of itself, right? So like, just like a literal, like misreading of what's, uh, uh of what's going on or what this is about, right? Um, so in a tweet that would be retweeted nearly 500 times, Senyard asked people to spread the word about the Black Witch by sharing her review. A clarion call for YA Twitter, which regularly identifies and denounces books for being problematic. An all-purpose umbrella term for describing texts that engage improperly with race, gender, sexual orientation, disability, and other marginalization. So keep this in mind. This kind of shit that you associate so much with 2020 that you think is like a black thing. This actually happened years ago. And had been happening for years on Twitter in this little niche. It's all white, right? There's white academics, right? This is a white, 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 white industry. It's primarily benefiting white people. It's primarily going to be white readers. Let's be honest with these kind of fucking books. Um, that have like no relation to anybody or anything. Um, I mean, that, that, that's just kind of like the reality, right? So, uh, that was the white culture, the white little subculture that became, you know, you think BLM is new, you think cancel culture is new. That 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 domesticated BLM that we saw 
you know, for most of 2020, right? Uh, after like the first month or so, that kind of BLM, that kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, BLM corporatism, um, that just came from white culture, right? That, that is an ex- another example of like a superstructure, right? Finding its way in. So we already had this like superstructure, uh, bubbling, um, uh, in, in, in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, subculture, right? Uh, again, in its publishing, right? So led by a group of influential authors who pull no punches when it comes to calling out their colleagues' work and amplified by tens of thousands of teen and young adult followers from whom online activism is second nature, the campaigns to keep offensive books off shelves are a regular feature in the community that's as passionate about social justice as it is about reading. I mean, absolutely. if I was a kid and social media, like I'm, I'm glad that I became an adult by the time that I ever got on social media. If I was a teenager and not could get a cult following by like being smart. I remember when I was in MySpace, I definitely got like a bit of a following on MySpace by being smarter than average. Um, and these are all strangers, right? And it's much, you know, harder to meet in that context. But imagine on like fucking Twitter, you could like literally build a, a brand, a career, like as a teenager. When I was 16 and I was into politics, yeah, I did have a genuine interest, but another part of me just wanted to get laid, right? Like people called out like Obama for saying that shit. I mean, a, a big part of why I was in politics as a 16 year old was I wanted to fuck. Right. I mean, this shouldn't surprise anyone. This is true of, of almost any male, literally anybody that says otherwise is a fucking liar. Um, if I was on Twitter at that time and I could get on these bandwagons before I could even like, like, cause I, at least back then, like what, what introduced me to the world was I wanted to become an activist after reading like, you know, Eldridge Cleaver after reading like actual, like, you know, like hard texts that were, that were hard for me to read that I had to like really spend time with that I had to think about there. It, it was much harder to like have like black and white takes on things, which it, it was much harder um, to, you know, to sort of like, you know, it, it was much harder, for example, to read something like uh, Huck Finn and say like, Oh, that's a racist book because it has, you know, the N word, right? Like you couldn't do some shit like that. But if there was like some wave that would like carry me forward, and if I was weak enough then, I mean, I, I can't go back in time enough to like really remember what would have happened, but I could easily imagine like if, if like, if like, you know, if there was enough pussy involved, if there was enough fame involved, if there was like some kind of money involved, I could have easily been, you know, um, a young adult activist that is on the cusp of becoming 18, turns 18, 19, 20, is now influential, is now an adult, now has like a new standard by which I could operate under. Um, they, they, you, you give these kids so much fucking like, you give them so much motivation, so much incentive to do and think the wrong things, right? When libs behave this way, so much incentive to to behave like 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 these these grown fucking children that are uh uh uh, uh doing this kind of uh baiting shit. Um, based sol- solely on Senior's opinion, the novel became the object of sustained aggressive opposition in the weeks leading up to its release. Again, like I, I just just think about this literally, like you know. Fine. This, this is a bad book. It's a badly written book. It doesn't have anything to really show or teach that other better books have not done before it. But it's literally not what it's being called out to be, right? It's not a racist novel. It's a novel that is supposed to tell you and very kind of like, um, uh, over the top, pandering, condescending fact- fashion why racism is bad, kids, and you shouldn't be racist. Um, like that's literally what it's doing. Like it's it's supposed to be the object of adulation, and you know, uh, like I I get it. Like uh, it's true that this thing that could have been a cash cow for like organized capital doesn't get to be that, and people are pissed. But instead, you have this like fucking media campaign. Maybe you'll have counter books. Maybe you're gonna have, you know, if not directly pocketing money, tons of people suddenly becoming popular and becoming themselves cash cows. So it's very easy to be able to say, this is a racist book because it has racist language, right? It's very easy to say something that is literally 100% false. Um, And all these kids are, are just being, this is their fucking incentive, right? Its publisher, Harlequin Teen, was bombarded, bombarded with angry emails demanding they pull the book. 
The Black Witch's Goodreads rating dropped to an abysmal 1.71 thanks to a mass-coordinated campaign of one-star reviews, mostly from people who admitted to not having read it. Twitter threads damning the novel made the rounds, while a Tumblr post instructing users to be an ally and signal boost the outrage racked up nearly 6,000 notes. Um, Senior kept a running tally of reviews circulation, blah, blah, blah. Um, so positive uh, buzz uh, dies off. Uh, people start confronting the readers of this book, insisting on why are they reading a racist book when Kirkus gave the novel a glowing star review. Dozens of commenters demand a retraction. The uproar was so intense that Kirkus ran a follow-up essay on the difference between representation and endorsement, which is also kind of like mealy mouth. Like that's not the way you should phrase this conflict. The simple fact that a book contains the repugnant ideas is not himself, in my opinion, a reason to condemn it. Literature has a long history as a place to confront our ugliness and its role provoking both thought and change and thought is a critical one. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the whole essay says, but uh, I would frame it as, well, uh, uh, actually, this thing itself is, con- it's not that it has a repugnant idea. It has a repugnant idea that it's constantly making fun of and it's trying to attack and trying to tell you that's the wrong idea, right? Um, it's not as if like in a bloodless way, um, a literature in general confronts and maybe now that we could talk about the book's repugnant ideas, uh, uh, maybe now we could have a conversation about, you know, something really, that, that, that just strikes me as very, um, but anyway, maybe, maybe Kirkus did, did, did do well, uh, who knows, um, Mimi, uh, a teen book blogger, uh, who describes herself as a huge fantasy reader, was among those who had been looking forward to The Black Witch, and she was initially thrilled to see Sinyard, an influential voice in the community, pick up the book. I was really excited for what she was going to say about it. I thought it was going to be 600 pages of epicness. I mean, like, we're, like, are, like, are we talking about literature? Are we talking about books? Are we talking about, like, w- w- like what does that mean? 600 pages of epicness. These people are not talking about, and this is a kid, right? Like, this is a kid. Maybe, well, maybe not a kid anymore, but, you know, uh, at the time of writing, this was a kid. And this was a kid that was so pulverized into this mush that this cultural, this meaningless, worthless cultural object was, like, shoved down her throat so much that she thought that this was like a the, the right way to engage with culture, to be in culture, that this was worthwhile, right? That this was going to be epic, right? Um, I find, like, I find that, like, you know, w- when we talk about, like, the kids involved, I mean, ha- hasn't anybody thought about, like, well, what exactly, like, based on, like, what are, what are the kids made to consume and who's pushing it? These huge fucking publishing houses, what are they motivated to push? And, and is that really things that are best for kids' minds? Like, d- like, does anybody think that this is, like, if this is a teen blogger, let's, let, let's assume that she was, let's say, 14 or 15 at the time. Does anybody think that getting involved in this kind of, like, it, like, does anybody think this is good for a kid to grow up on? I grew up, I grew up in conflict. I, I, I would have to argue with people at protests as a kid. If I didn't have people to argue with online and like me- message boards or whatever, I would argue in my head reading books and thinking, what would this person think about that? What would that person think about this? But to argue in this way, right? That this is violence, that this is hurting black children, that, that this, that we demand a retraction, that this cannot be, this is a, a, this is literal fucking child abuse. A kid should not be exposed to this kind of garbage. Just like kids being exposed to any fucking military recruiter coming to their school is literal fucking child abuse and anybody involved needs to get locked up. Anybody involved in creating people that turn out insane, I would I would I would personally imprison them too. I would find some way to imprison them. I would. Um, yeah, so me, so maybe was looking forward to 600 pages of epicness. 
uh, uh, but her excitement soured when she caught wind of the book's issues. Just reading the sentences collected in Singer's Review and Twitter threads was painful, she says. And, th- and think about that response, like that. Not only um, are, are, do, is this like, like the industry thinks this is an appropriate set of interactions for a child to have. They have so educated her that these Twitter threads are painful. Has has anybody, with the exception of like reading that Arthur Chu shit, which to me I wouldn't even call painful to me, that has any has any like normal person read a Twitter thread and thought it was painful? You're 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 just like. You're just fucking up these kids so hardcore. And then, and then, and then you're acting like, you know, uh, you're in this industry for any other reason other than the fact that since kids are involved, you could use them as meat shields for your fucking careerism. Somebody starts with like a career fucking idea, this like woke bullshit that has nothing to do with children or education. They build fucking careers on it. They, they drag kids into this shit. And now they want to pretend they're in this career for any other reason. No, no, you're not here to help kids. You're here because kids are so easy to use as meat shields. The harm Mimi describes is central to campaigns like the one against the Black Witch, which are almost always waged in the name of protecting vulnerable teens from dangerous ideas. Oh my goodness. Do you want to know what I fucking read as a teenager? I hope it's what every teenager reads. Let's let's put it that way. These books, it's claimed, are hurting children. Hey, Harley Quinn teen, I'd like to know what's your intent intent intend regarding the Black Witch. Will changes be made to avoid people teens being hurt? I don't know if this is like a kid. Like uh, if this is a kid, I don't want to um. Uh, I don't like I don't like making fun of uh, kids because I I said plenty of dumb shit. I was in politics sometimes for the wrong reasons. I and if I had a, a, a documentary record this long of my you know uh, adolescent stupidity, I'd be very embarrassed and I would hate the fact and I wouldn't think it's fair that this sort of thing s- stays forever. So I I don't want to uh, uh, if this is a kid, I don't want to make fun of it. But uh, I I just want to point out that teens getting hurt, like teens are getting hurt by this fucking discourse existing. Okay, they just are. Kids should not be involved in these kinds of conversations. The conversation the kids should be involved in is they should read actual books. They should read actual ideas. They should read fucking Mein Kampf. They should read um, uh, 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 Huck Finn. They should read Moby Dick. They should read Invisible Man. They should read, uh, Black Boy. They should, they should, they should read across the fucking ideological, political, color, whatever aesthetic spectrum. That, that's the only thing that matters. Any, anything else, anything short, like anything short of that is literally hurting kids, right? But a growing number of critics say the draggings, well intended though they may be, are evidence of a growing dysfunction in the world of YA publishing. One author and former diversity advocate described why she no longer takes part. I have never seen social interaction this fucked up, she wrote an email, and I've been in prison. Many members of YA Book Twitter have been culture cops, monitoring their peers across multiple platforms for violations. Oh my God. I am I am fucking uh, a nervous wreck enough as it is even going on Twitter. I, I've been posting like once a month because I hate it so much. Imagine being so tuned in and so – talk about child abuse. Imagine being so tuned in that you have multiple social media accounts, multiple things they have to follow and post to and look at. And you have people following you across these platforms trying to see <laughs> what you're up to. The result is a jumble of dogpiling and dragging, subtweeting and screenshotting. They think this is, they, they, they're saying this is good for teens. They're saying protect teens. They're, they're, they're saying this is, they're, they're saying that they're helping teens. Like, don't, don't, don't fucking tell me there's any other reason for this industry other than organized capital found, hey, kids are involved. Kids are a fucking cash cow, whether it's education or publication or anything in fucking between. 
And let's fucking put our tentacles in there too. Don't fucking tell me that this is good for kids. Imagine, 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 like, I, I don't know who my audience is. I don't know how old you guys are, but like, we grew, I grew up with AIM. I grew up with AOL. I had AOL since sixth grade. Um, but you know, like, I'm, I'm so glad that it didn't go past AIM. I'm so glad that, that I could like, you know, I, I could use AIM to meet girls if I wanted to and meet people with like-minded interests and get girlfriends like that and get people, you know, actually to commiserate with. That's good. But to, to, to have this like public record, like th- those AIM, th- like th- th- those AIM conversations are dead right they're done everything is done those chats are done those chat rooms are done to have this like follow you forever right and to say to turn around and for the adults that are involved and many of these people are adults it's not just kids doing this it's mostly adults doing this they're saying this is good for teens teens watching this this is good for you guys Representatives of both factions say they've received threats or had to shut down their accounts owing to harassment and all expressed fear of being targeted by influential community members, even when they were ostensibly on the same side. If anyone found out I was talking to you, Mimi told me, I would be blackballed. That's why Trump won. And that's, that's why Trump almost won again. I'll never tire, I'll never tire saying that. All the fucking, um, you know, this isn't going to be a close call bullshit. This is where you're electrifying. This is where you're creating. And then you wonder, how the fuck did Trump get 75 billion votes? That's more than Obama in 2008. How the fuck will people so excited about voting for Trump? I don't know. You tell me. Dramatic as that sounds, it's worth noting that my attempts to report this piece were met with intense. Oh, I, I, I was just like, I was, I was reading that in my normal amped up voice. I have to go back to the Cat Rosenfield. Um, she's very, she's very calm. Like if you see her on uh, the show, so um, maybe we could aspire to that. Dramatic as that sounds, it's worth noting that my attempts to report this piece were met with intense pushback. Sinyard politely declined my request for an interview in which seemed like a routine exchange, but then announced on Twitter in her interaction had, quote, scared her, leading her, uh, leading to backlash from community members who insisted that as yet unwritten story would endanger her life, right? Th- this is like the safety isn't bullshit um, that we see a lot of now, right? But you know, th- th- this is all, you know, this is all white liberal women, right? Mostly like this is kind of like where it starts from. This is uh you know, white liberal women who have it better than uh, most people in America, definitely better than black men, for example, Uh, you know, sort of pretending like they're the oppressed class, uh, extending the safetyism to not a man should not even be able to look at me without, uh, you know, being treated to uh, in some hostile fashion. Um, And now to things like, oh, my goodness, even criticizing me is a threat to my life, right? Um, this, this is all this is all coming from you know a, a very peculiar form of white liberalism that has nothing even to do probably with the liberalism of people like Obama honestly like we're 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 even more trite than that rumors quickly spread that I had threatened her ras seniored um several influential authors instructed their followers not to speak to me and one librarian member of the Newberry Award committee tweeted a vulture nearly a dozen times accusing them of enabling quote a washed up YA author engaged in quote, a personalized crusade against the entire publishing community. Disclosure while freelance culture writing makes up the bulk of my work. I publish a pair of young adult novels in 2012 and 2014. Um, With one exception, all my sources instead in anonymity, citing fear of professional damage and abuse. Um, And this is kind of like what annoys me the most. Uh, Like the, like the fact that she was called by these like dunces, a washed up YA author. Uh, it's not so much that like, I want to champion Kat Rosenfield's fiction. I mean, I haven't read it. Um, I I don't, uh, I can't say one thing about it or another, but like, this isn't even a comment on her. This isn't a comment on the writing. This is a comment on, oh, Kat Rosenfield isn't as popular as some of these other names in YA Twitter, which is true. She is not the most popular person on YA Twitter. Um, and washed up means 
hey, uh, uh, you haven't been able to strictly make a living purely from your writing alone. Like so far, like keep in mind that so much of this language, even this like insult, a wash up author, none of this has to do with like the innate intrinsic value of the object being produced. Again, if we think of organized capital just producing these cultural objects for the fuck of it, simply because there's an idiot out there that's going to buy it. There's, there's going to be no intrinsic value, right? There's just going to be a leveraging of temporary emotions, temporary fads. And when, when that is out of print, you have to just go to the new thing. So this isn't even a comment on Rosenfield's writing, right? Um, this is, this isn't a comment on anything that she can innately do. This is, this, this has nothing to do with her in an innate sense, right? Uh, whether, whether or not you're washed up in, in the way that's, that's being framed here. This is a, this is a look at the draw. I said it before. YA publishing and publishing in general, but especially YA, it's just a fucking casino, right? And it's like, what, somebody, um, and I'm sure the, 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 the person, um, uh, that, that, that said this is probably is, uh, uh, not that popular either. I mean, a librarian and member of the Newberry Award. I mean, like, how, how fucking unsexy is that? Like, you're not a hot fucking writer, right? You're not taking sexy fucking photos where, you know, uh, all the, all the, all the uh, boys reading your books want to fuck you. Like, none of that is happening. You're just a librarian and a member of Newberry Award. What, what careerism is there for you, right? Well, maybe if I criticize Cat Rose and Field and Curl her washed up, I could fucking climb the ladder. This is all, like, all these, like, institutions, it's all about one fucking thing. I have no respect for these people. I have no respect for these award committees, Pulitzers, Nobels. It's all garbage. Okay? It's garbage. None of this comes as a surprise to the folks concerned by the current state of the discourse who describe being har- harassed for dissenting from or even questioning the community's dynamics. Yeah, it's really, it's really over the top, like a uh, group thing, much more so than, you know, political Twitter. One prominent children's book agent told me, cause like part, por- like part of political Twitter, right? It's like, you gotta be the bad boy sometimes, right? You gotta take a contrarian point of view. So like you could have libs and sub libs and sub libs of sub libs, right? Um, uh, and you could be like ballsy and you could do this and you could sort of, you know, troll people and it's, and it's, and it's expected with YA, uh, if you exceed the bounds of a very specific kind of conformity, you're, you're out of that shit forever. Right. And suddenly, because like, unlike, you know, like a lot of these other, you know, some political stuff, like since this is all like monolithic, like publishing houses and shit, uh, once they, you know, drop you, you know, you better have your own audience. One prominent children's book agent told me, none of us are willing to comment publicly for fear of being targeted and labeled racist or bigoted. But if children's book publishing is no longer allowed to feature an unlikable character who grows as a person over the course of the story, then we're going to have a pretty boring business. Well, it is a pretty fucking boring business um, to begin with. I I, I don't understand uh, what excites people here. I mean, you know. Uh, I've sort of followed this a little bit, I guess, but, uh, you know, this is the first time I'm commenting on it, hopefully never again. I mean, there's nothing here, right? The Black Witch, there's nothing here. Another agent via email said that while being tarred as problematic may not kill an author's career, quote, it likely made the rounds as gossip, but I don't know if it's impacting acquisitions or agents offering representation. The potential for reputational damage is real. No one wants to be called racist or sexist or homophobic. That stink doesn't wash off. Um, authors seem aware of this. They're tailoring their online presence for this. Um, uh, one, uh, New York Times bestselling author said, quote, I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my career. I'm afraid for offending people that have no intention of offending. I just feel unsafe to say much on Twitter. So I don't, uh, this is honestly the reason why I started doing this channel and like shit like this. I don't want to be dependent on anybody. Eventually when I b- build a big enough, audience uh it's not gonna matter right like you know the, the kinds of shit that i'm saying on on this stream um this is not the shit that we, you would say on like you know publication publication twitter right um but it, you know it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter right um uh let's let's live not only for the day but also for the future she also scrapped a work in progress that featured a person of color character. Wow, right? A lot of, like, Jessica Schneider complained about this, right? She said um, that, uh, like, when she was shopping around, she did this novel 
uh, about a, a black protagonist that ultimately gets uh, lynched uh, during uh, the Depression, um, the Great Depression. And uh, agents told her, like, can we get, like, a photo of you? Like, can we, uh, like, because uh, they want they wanted to see what she looked like. And if she was too white and too suburban and too this and too that, no way could you possibly be right about the black experience, right? Um, I'm eventually planning a novel, actually, on a uh, – it's been in my head for a while. Right, and when things are in my head for a while, eventually they do come out. Um, uh, 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 a, a novel uh, from the perspective of like a regionally famous rapper. Um, uh, I don't know what the time period would be, but maybe sometime in the two thousands or the twenty tens. Um, and it's gonna be—he's uh, gonna be black. He's gonna be kind of based, I guess, on maybe what Little Wayne might might have been had he never really uh, blew up um, uh, like fifteen years ago. Uh, I remember like when I used to listen to his rap uh, and it was all at that point, like just strictly, you know, uh, a very specific type of Southern rap. And like you would, you know, um, I'd never meet people like uh, listening it uh, like when I was like 12, 13 years old. Um, but uh, yeah, but I'm going to do this black character. Right. And and he's going to have tons of very dirty language that white people aren't supposed to say. But of course, it is a black character. And I know it's like a fucking like, you know, a, a nuclear bomb going off. But it's like. I had this thought in my head. I had this novel in my head, okay? It's 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 about a character that never truly grows up. You look at somebody like Lil Wayne, he hasn't truly grown up, right? Um, uh, somebody that doesn't seem to really get reality or art. If you look at Lil Wayne, you know, same thing, right? I don't think that's an unfair uh, statement. And now since he's a little bit on the out, since he was a little bit Trumpy, or like over the last few years, maybe I could say that without also being canceled. Um but, uh, you know, he, you know, he, uh, 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 you know, like th- this is a protagonist that, you know, uh, gets tons of money that gets fame that kind of gets, you know, more or less what he's always wanted. Maybe he's not going to be totally famous, but regionally famous enough, but he, do- he still doesn't understand the world outside of that. Right. He, he's never curious enough. Right. And, uh, I, I, I do want it to touch on obviously like black issues, but it doesn't have to. There's much more like existential issues in there that are interesting. Yeah. The, the language is going to be not, you know, traditional white language. It doesn't matter. And so, you know, so, and somebody, and somebody could say, well, it's not your place to do that, Alex. Well, here's the thing. If it's not my place to do that, and it's, if it's your place to do that, then go ahead and write this book before I do. And you best make sure that it's a better book than the book that I will eventually write on this subject. Because if my book is the better book and your book is the worst book, even though you happen to have the right skin color, guess what? Your book is not going to survive for very long. It might survive for some time, but it's not going to survive for very long and it's not going to matter, okay? So that's always the response, right? If this isn't my place, then you better do something better. And if you don't, I'm not going to fucking wait for you. Imagine waiting, you know, uh, uh, imagine like 20, 30 years pass and, you know, hip hop continues to emerge, you know, it continues to develop in this kind of like maladaptive way that it's oftentimes developed, you know, since, uh, I guess the golden years. Um, and like, nobody wants to fucking touch it. Nobody like wants to deal with it. Like, you know, nobody has ever given black people anything. So hip hop is still like culturally hegemonic and it's like sort of, you know, banded about as this cool thing. You know, that we could give, uh, people, uh, other than like improve, improvements in material conditions. Um, imagine waiting all that time and nobody writes anything serious or deals with the topic seriously. And imagine like waiting simply because like your, your skin color isn't right while these like lazy fucks don't do shit, right? Anybody that might otherwise want to write about. It. And there might be plenty of white people that want to write about it or are too scared. And maybe, you know what? Maybe most people, most people, most people, white or black, if they have an idea like that, maybe they shouldn't go with it, right? Because I could just imagine the fucking disasters that would emerge from something like that. But anyway, um, but but this thing is real. Like maybe I'm giving a, a more kind of extreme example of this, but you know, th- this is real, right? People change their fucking characters. They change their characters because they can't. Um, uh, they, they 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 don't want to be, you know, sort of uh, uh, held in poor esteem in that in that way. Um, I was told, do not write that. I was told, spare yourself. And that, that's the thing. Like, like and, and, and this is also like a dead giveaway that how little of this has to do with like actual art. 
Like, what do you mean by spare yourself? Like, what, like, what are you trying to do? You're, you're trying to write a book that sells and you make money off of this and you like go on with your like comfortable life. Or are you trying to like actually make art, which is not a cultural object that is so easily constrained by organized capital that is not so easy to fit in these kinds of niches? Like, what are you trying to do? The, these clear, these so clearly are little fucking like nuggets that are, just, just, just passed around like hot potatoes and then they're, they're dropped because eventually you do go cold and you have to just jump in the new thing. This doesn't mean anything. What do you mean by spare? Like, am I going to spare myself? I, I get what I described. People are not going to like that. But like, if it's been in my head and it's like, all right, well, I've been sort of planning it. I've been sort of collecting books related to it. I've been sort of like, you know, it, it's in, it's in my mind. Clearly it's going to come out eventually. What do you mean by sp- like? What, wouldn't sparing myself be actually doing it, All right? Because I actually care about this thing. I actually want to do a good book. I want it to be daring. I want it to be interesting. I want it to be unlike you know other shit that you would read. I want it to be an actual you know art object. Um, I want it to be an artifact. I want it to be something that people are are proud to have spent time with. Like sparing myself would be actually doing that, right? Getting it out there. If my object, uh, objective was to be as popular as possible now, yes, yes, I agree that sparing myself would be you act the opposite way. But I'm not in the business of uh, commodities. I'm in the business of artistic objects. And I hope and I hope that anybody watching the stream understands that, right? Um, uh, I, I'm never going to be recruited for your bullshit fucking uh, uh, campaigns or bullshit fucking, you know, whatever. Um as much as much as I even if I politically agree with you, uh, um, I I I want I want to keep I want to keep things where they ought to be right. I want to I want to keep the long view in mind always. Another author recalled being instructed by her publisher to stay silent when her work was targeted and experience, as she says, resulted in professional ostracization. I never once responded or tried to defend my book. She wrote in a Twitter DM. Her publisher did feel it was being abused but felt we couldn't do anything about it. Well, honestly, if this is going on, the best thing the publishers could do and anybody involved is just like, don't respond and don't do anything and wait a week. And a week later, you're going to get more, uh, some new target. And if you wait there as well, a new target, and eventually nobody can be a target, right? So, so like stop, 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 stop giving into this uh, for the kids, right? Uh, stop perpetuating this for the children. Um. So, okay, more YA people like complaining about how they're being treated. Uh, clearly obvious problem, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, uh, oh, I guess it's a little bit different here. Uh, the diversity in publishing debate is very much at the root of the outrage when it comes to campaigns like the one against the Black Witch, reflecting a larger dissatisfaction with an industry that's overwhelmingly white at just about every w- level. It's not that it's just overwhelmingly white. It's also it's just been mushed into unpalatable mush. Right. It's been fucking polarized into this thing. Right. And everybody's just like choking on it. Right. This is what we mean by white. It's not just their, their fucking skin color. It's this monolithic ass publishing house culture with, uh, woke liberalism for the past half century, uh, uh, being leveraged a certain way for certain kinds of opinions. And it all just looks like garbage. Nobody cares anymore. Why would you read these fucking books if you could play a video game? Honestly, a video game does not offer anything more or anything less than these books do. Why would you read these books when you can play a video game? I don't get it. Right? You're not you're not engaging great art. Like, yes, I understand. If the if the distinction is between a video game and watching a great film or watching a great book or writing a great book, I get it. That's a very very different uh, question. But if we're talking about the Black Witch or whatever the fuck that could come out, um, if we're talking about that versus the video game, like we do get that it's the same thing, right? It's the same like meaningless, uh, you know, simply because you're not button mashing, you know, you're still, you're, you're brain mashing, but like in the least like noble ways, right? Um, it's, it's all, it's all nonsense. The multi-year push for more diverse books has yielded disappointing results. The latest statistics show that authors of color are still underrepresented. Even, even if they were represented appropriately, you would still have the same unpalatable mush. The cultural problem will not you know, be switched once the representation is fixed. 
even as books about minority characters are on an uptick. And while the loudest critics demand the Black Witch be dropped by its publisher, others simply express exhaustion at the ubiquity of books like it. This is true. The, the, everything from the cover to the writing to the title, everything is like this book. It's so it's so boring to even look at. The idea that th- th- this book would even ever cause any kind of controversy, this like milk toast nothing. In a representative tweet, author L. O. McKinney wrote, In the fight for racial equality, white people are not the focus. White authors writing books like The Continent or The Black Witch, who say it's an examination of racism in an attempt to dismantle it, quote, uh, you don't have the range. Uh, McKinney did not uh, respond for requests to interview. And, and I mean, that's obviously bullshit. I mean, that, that that's also, that's not the, the right fucking critique of what I just said. It's not that white people don't have the range. Certainly, most white people don't have the range to discuss black issues. That's because most people, including black people, don't have the range and the intelligence and the anything to discuss substantively issues in the world and actually turn it into great writing. Most people don't have that talent. You don't have to be white. You don't have to be black. It's not a racial thing. Most people don't have that fucking talent. They just don't. Okay? So, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if, um, uh, 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 Kat Rosenfield is sort of approvingly quoting this as a, um, you know, like, oh yeah, yeah, this is a, a cogent comment, but it's not a cogent comment. It's just not, right? This is not the right way to discuss uh, uh, this issue. Still, the interpretation of Forrest's novel as a 600-page peon to uh, anti-miscegenation seems rare among those who've actually read it. On Amazon, where the book is currently read 4.3 stars out of 5, Views generally agree that the book is firmly anti-prejudice. Um, yeah, and I mean, this book eventually starts selling again. And this, this is a representative tweet. I don't care if someone else said the book is problematic. I'm going to read, and then Tristina Wright is, I guess, having this meme where she's smacking uh, uh, the guy uh, who says uh, they're going to read a racist book. I mean, like, literally, like, w- w- what this is saying is, I mean, like, like, should people not read Mein Kampf? Like, it's like, should you not? I mean, I haven't read the whole thing. I've read parts of it, but like, should you not read it? Like, what? Like, sh- like, I, I, I don't get it. E- even, even if, even if the book is in fact, even if the book is in fact not taking, not only does it have, even if the book has disgusting ideas, and it support, the book is clearly supporting those ideas. There has not been an argument that I've seen for do not read that book. That's just, it's just childish, right? That's not, that's, that's not anything. Um, Mamie, the teen blogger who had once been so excited by the Black Witch, was among those who urged others to avoid the book. Question, if Mamie had not read, because, you know, Mamie is a kid. If Mamie had not read that fucking comment right about this is a racist book would she have read this book of like racist characters saying racist things only to get criticized for uh their racism like would she have thought that this was a racist book or would she say like oh this is a nice critique of racism itself like to the extent that these like experiences even mean anything she could have at least had a pleasurable experience most likely with reading the black twit the black witch and not having a negative response right? Knee jerk, right? Not that that's like, you know, a, a noble pursuit. I mean, it seems like a bad book anyway, but, um, you know, e- even, even that like little bit of pleasure was like ripped out of, you know, uh, this child's hands and all these people are saying that they care about the teens. Um, she still hasn't read it. Oh, <laughs> okay. So maybe she doesn't have any opinions about it. And doesn't plan to. Okay, maybe maybe I was wrong. Maybe uh, maybe this is worse than I thought. She feels that Senior's review tells her all she needs to know. I trusted her take on it. Wow, la- la- last fucking words, right? Um, she showed pictures from the book and certain passages in the book, so it's not like she was making it up. Mimi says. So Lori Forrest uh, did respond to email uh, to Kat Rosenfeld and she said, quote, My publishing house and I felt it was important to listen to the discussion and we were respectful of people's opinions and the debate. It's a worthwhile discussion. 
Uh, well, maybe, but not in the way that it's been had. It's a worthless fucking discussion in the way that it's being had. Published books belong to their readers and readers should feel comfortable being honest about their views. Yeah, they should feel comfortable being honest about their views, but you should also feel comfortable to call them fucking morons if they voice views that are clearly asinine. But she also says her book's pro-diversity message is genuine. I think there is a need for diversity in all phases of publishing, and it's exciting to see that happening. The Black Witch explores what it's like to grow up in a closed-minded culture, and its message is that people who may have been raised with prejudiced views can change for the better, but it takes time and education. Nevertheless, Mimi's worry that the campaign against the Black Witch was all for nothing isn't entirely off-base. It's rare that a title will be pulled in response to anger in social media. Now, so three years later, right? Kat Rosenfield uh, wrote this, well, four years later, 2017. Now, it's actually much more common that a title will be pulled in response to anger in social media. Uh, yes, certain titles won't be pulled. Like, I get it. Like, um, you know, you're never going to cancel uh, J.K. Rowling because, like, she made hundreds of millions of dollars for uh, a bunch of people. Uh, maybe actually, well, if she's worth a billion dollars, she must have made uh, billions of dollars for people in general. So she's never going to get canceled. But if you have like a, a book that, you know, could be canceled without too much fanfare and instead you could replace it with three like, you know, equally ass nine books, but like from a different ideological persuasion. Why not? Like if you could fucking push like if, if capital is always looking for markets to push its goods upon. And it's found it, its market in like, you know, uh, the rapidly emptying heads of children. Uh, why, why the fuck not, right? We're just going to put them in. So, uh, now, you know, a few years later, we would have to amend, amend, uh, Kat Rosenfield's statement to say that it is actually common that a book will be pulled, uh, in response to outrage. People will be fired in response to outrage. Bad things will happen in response to outrage because for whatever re reason, people participate in and they, and they pay attention to to outrage when simply not giving it any attention it would, would, would kill it right this is this is this is the status quo leveraging your emotions and uh, uh you know, ha have some fucking respect for yourself um so when we was fierce was yanked from shelves on the eve of its release amid accusations that it stereotyped as black character several months later harlequin team delayed why a fantasy the continent after Author Justina Ireland lambasted the book for employing white savior tropes, but for the most part, those who spear spearhead the campaigns against problematic books seldom receive an official response. Oof, how quickly things change. Harlequin declined to comment for this piece, but another publisher at a big well, now they would comment. They'd be like, "We did what we what we had to do. Um, you know, uh, we we have to take a pro diversity message." Blah blah blah. You know. Of course, they would fucking jump in, right? Because companies know, like, hey, you know, like, 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 t like, tell people you're like the good, the good corporation, right? Like, tell people you're, you're the good company, you're the good capital. Harlequin declined to comment for this piece, but another publisher at a big five imprint has a simple reason for staying out of the fray. I truly don't find those conversations of value, and I hope an author would feel the same. Um, yeah, uh, well, I don't know if they're not a value. They're not a value in the way they've been had. As well as a message for readers like Sinyard who feel their campaigns deserve a response. Get upset, I would say. Continue to go get upset. It's entirely your right. But if this were my author and we were having this conversation, I'd say don't respond or block them. It's not their position. It's not their role. They are a reader. If they don't like it, fine. As a publisher, we are here to curate, defend, and protect fiction. The author's ability to create... Or as he or she see, feels fit to tell the stories that he or she feels fit and to not let the book be affected by outside opinion, except those who are close enough to advise on story. And that might be kind of the way around this right now. Everybody that's have a, a publishing contract. Now they're all going to get close advisors to the story. And, you know, there's certain things you're not allowed to say anyway. Right. So that we don't get to this stage. It's not that they want to fucking defend you. It's that they don't want to have to defend you. As for the potential of these campaigns to affect the book sales, that same publisher is unconcerned. There's that line. There's no such thing as bad press. And at some point, people will buy it just to look at it so they can join the critical parade. Um, 
even though uh, even the Black Witch, who took one of the worst online beatings in recent memory, scored a number one rating in Amazon's department of teen young adult wizards fantasy a few days after its release, and has been overwhelmingly well received since. Again, this is this is for many books has not been the case. I've seen plenty of one star reviews, and I've seen tons of uh, uh, these campaigns that were successful. So we cannot take that for granted anymore. It isn't interesting how like. Like everything that you have, everything that you think is sacred is just getting a little chipped away little by little. Like there, there's, there's, there's so little, like as time goes on, that you can take for granted. Will, will morons storm the fucking Capitol and possibly get killed and possibly kill a recently elected official? Uh, didn't, <laughs> you took it for granted until two days ago, didn't you? Among the book, uh, buying public though, that parade may be mostly passing a notice. Yes, most people don't give a fuck. Most people are not in the internet, thankfully. The scandals that loom so large on Twitter don't necessarily interest consumers. Instead, the tempest of these controversies remains confined to a handful of internet teapots where a few angry voices can seem thunderously loud, which, again, that's now been uh, changed. Still, some publishing professionals imagine that the outrage will eventually become powerful enough to rattle the industry. Oof. Mm. Another agent who describes himself as devoted to diversity in publishing since before he became mainstream concerned is ambivalent about the current state of affairs. Like how many like old school fucking like liberals. And I don't mean like, you know, like Dave Rubin type knuckleheads. I mean like actual old school liberals like, you know, Norman Finkelstein or even me to some degree, although I'm not uh, old enough uh, to be old school yet. Um, how many people just watch this shit and they're like, yeah, I, 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 you know, uh, if I wasn't a piece of shit, I would vote for Trump. <laughs> I would vote for Trump. And how many who watch this kind of shit and they're like, listen, uh, as sympathetic as I am, this is just some bullshit. And so I guess in short, I think we're in a really ugly part of the process, he says. Um, damn guys, I'm getting tired. Um, Francina, Francina Simone, uh, Francina Simone, for one, falls firmly in the latter category. People seem to want these books to validate them, and that's almost completely impossible, she says. It would be like me watching The Simpsons and saying it's harmful to me. Take it off the air. It's baffling. People pretend as if there is no off switch. The idea that it shouldn't be in the public atmosphere, I find it extremely funny that people don't think that's censorship. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, generally speaking, uh, you want there to be as le as little uh, uh, of this stuff as possible, and definitely not censorship uh, in re in response to, you know, literally like a mob that just goes from like fresh meat to fresh meat, like literally every fucking day, right? These things never last more than like three days. And even if it becomes an article of faith that certain books are harmful and shouldn't exist, how to adjudicate the claims of harm is a question nobody seems to answer. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, tons of people, of course, watching this. Normal people, if you're a normal person, you're going to be uncomfortable with this. Um, and I mean, I, I read this article just to give you guys, like, I guess, some broader context to what I saw, like, in the last month, I guess, there was this whole kind of blow up. Um, uh, so uh, this, this, this uh, lady... Uh, Jess Keir, Jess Clues, I guess is her handle. Um, she seems, she seems like she's a young adult, uh, writer. And, uh, because of all this kind of like, I guess, woke shit about like, you know, you know, disrupt tax hashtag, um, yeah, like, uh, BLM stuff, like, like whatever. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what her politics are, but she, she just didn't like where this was going, like in relation to, uh literature and also like just the people were like literally misreading text like you know calling things like huck finn racist right um oh i'm not sure if you guys hear uh my little cat um but she's squeaking and now i have a bigger cat that just came out he seems to be ignoring her but he's he's sniffing um yeah, so if you guys weren't watching the stream before uh, early on, I took on a uh, I took on a street cat overnight. Now overnight, what I'm saying over over the holidays a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she's been very quiet, but recently she's been very very vocal. She's become a lot less cautious and a lot more brave. Uh, she's four years old. 
And so my, my other cast are just like walking around trying to see what's going on. Um, for whatever reason, he seems to have his collar off. He needs to have his collar on. Otherwise, he's going to scratch his face and take his scab off again. Um, but yeah, he's just kind of like sniffing around her cat tree trying to get familiar. Maybe she'll come out again. And I hope you guys don't hear yowling for uh, the entire thing. Uh, hopefully, this mic won't pick it up. Um, anyway, so... Uh, she, you know, she, she's a YA writer. She's she's uncomfortable with what's happening. She's uncomfortable with the fact that, in a purely literal basis, people are just misreading texts. And uh, this whole thing happened because of these tweets. Like, she saw like like first of all, John Steinbeck was getting fucking dragged for racism and classism. Can you like f- John Steinbeck, who was like so obviously sympathetically writing about? labor in america and about you know uh the common man in many circles he's being treated as you know some sort of bigot so she's seeing shit like this and uh she writes uh john steinbeck writing with sneering disgust about agricultural laborers and the grapes of wrath and of of mice and men is what i would say if i were so-called educator who was in fact a charlton right people were saying that Right, that he was disgusted by these people and he was making fun of them. She also goes on to say, Remember the horrible lessons learned from the Wizard of Oz and its total dearth of interesting female characters? Then be honest, you haven't read a tool of idiocracy. And I mean, we could debate about Wizard of Oz as, as a, a work of art, but I mean, um, uh, to say that it was just meant to stereotype women is like, uh, it's a bit of a reach. Uh, ah, yes. Remember, their eyes were watching God and other literature of the extraordinary Harlem Renaissance. I guess not, dick. Um, she goes on. Uh, ah, yes. That embodiment of brutal subjugation and toxic masculinity, Walden. Walden, sit and spin on attack. Sit and spin on attack. Oh, sit and spin on attack, I guess. Yeah. So she's making fun of people that call Walden toxic masculinity. Uh, remember how Louisa May Alcott wrote Little Women to uphold the patriarchy? If you do, stop taking drugs, you hack. So, um, uh, she, she ends it by saying, uh, 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 by the way, people were saying that Hawthorne in, in the Scarlet Letter, um, uh, was in the side that she complains about this of the judgmental Puritans, right? And I mean, this is, so she finishes by saying, this anti-intellectual, anti-curiosity bullshit is poison and I will stand here and scream that it's sheer goddamn evil until my hair falls out. I do not care. So this is what she said. This is how she ended. Again, I have not read her books either. I, I don't know if she has any talent whatsoever. I don't know if she's uh, kind of you know, guilty of some of the same things she accuses others of being. But she was responding to, I think it was a Dominican woman. Uh, and she just called her like moron, stupid, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, things that you should be allowed to say about anybody because, yes, you could be stupid and Dominican, I'm sorry to say. Um, and she got fucking dragged for it. She was called a racist for calling out a woman of color, for calling a woman of color dumb, for playing like race and IQ games, like whatever the fuck. And um, I mean, I don't like seeing this happen. Like literally like just a day or two after she just completely bent the knee, right? Um this is an apology for Lorena German and all who follow me, including my readers, educators, and my publisher. So the apology is this. I am writing to apologize for a thread I tweeted yesterday. I take full responsibility for my unprovoked anger. Well, it was provoked. Toward Lorena German and the German and the impact of my words on her and all who read them. I neither expect nor will ask for anyone's forgiveness or to engage with me further regarding this issue. I want to acknowledge the pain I caused and to apologize sincerely for it. My words were misguided, wrong, and deeply hurtful. I must and will do better. Oh my gosh, she even said do better. I'm committed to learning more about Miss uh, German's important work with uh, hashtag disrupt texts. I agree that what counts as canon in literature changes over time and that it can, canon should be contested and expanded to other more inclusive kinds of text. Again, I am deeply sorry. I will strive to do better. Um, like libs haven't learned shit from Trump. Like Trump said, don't apologize for bullshit. And you know, he also said, don't apologize for actually things that you do wrong, but at minimum, right? 
don't apologize for bullshit. Maybe like if libs don't want to like go full fucking fascist and they do want to like take responsibility for bad things that they do would be a, a, a nice uh, 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 change uh, actually if they were to do that. But uh, it, it, you know, if, if if they want to take responsibility, great. Um, but if you don't do or say anything wrong and someone is dragging you and, and trying to fucking trick you and manipulate you into thinking that you did something wrong when in fact these other people they did something wrong, um like just 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 don't apologize. There's like no no point here. Like if you um if you, if you just move along, right? And actually I think maybe not her, but maybe there was another uh YA author who was dragged maybe maybe actually was her maybe she had to bend the knee because her agent actually went on fucking twitter another one of these like careerist fucking hacks went on twitter and said um uh, what she said was unacceptable i reject this i no longer represent her blah 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 maybe it was her maybe it was somebody else but you know all these like careerist fucking hacks and you know the, the only reason why uh, 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 Jess Clues needs this as, you know, this is her job. She doesn't want to be out of a job. And second, she probably doesn't have enough of a base kind of, um, uh, audience that's big enough where she could say, yo, fuck you. I'm going to just self publish and make all my money that way. She's probably not able to do that. Um, uh, so she probably is a creator of these like cultural little objects that don't go anywhere, that don't do anything. Right. And because of that fact, um, uh, she needs this like monolithic machine behind it that, listen, this is how we're going to sell guys. I know that your work is total shit. I know that it's not nothing interesting, but we're going to, we're going to, uh, uh, sell, you know, 10,000 pre-copies. We're going to make sure that 10,000 libraries get them. We're going to make sure that, you know, 10,000 schools get it. We're going to make sure that you at least come out with like a million, you know, like a hundred thousand copies sold or whatever uh, uh just by those means alone like if you need that kind of machinery to sell books um you know i, I don't you know i don't uh, uh 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 blame you right but but also let's not let's not act as if uh you are acting according to principles let's not act let's not act as if uh your art is probably you know in any way kind of like a um you know uh a uh, 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 novel interesting daring useful thing for kids it's probably not right um so uh, anyway i find it disappointing but so she made this apology you would think like okay fine uh fucking move on to your next uh, uh red meat guys like just leave her the fuck alone but instead uh we we get uh this um so jesse single uh who uh, uh i follow on twitter um he he tweeted this out the YA author whose career is being torpedoed by a plainly fabricated accusation of racism apologized. But the apology wasn't enough, so one of her critics literally marked up her apology like she was a third grader. And the other critics are celebrating this as a noble act. Um, so, w one example. So, this is like one uh, uh, lady, a Shia Martin. Uh, because I'm an English teacher and I believe in revision hashtag growth mindset cc uh at jess clues which is the name of that author hashtag disrupt tax so um clearly trying to get popular right she, she, cl clearly trying to make some kind of name maybe she has a book coming maybe she's thinking about something maybe she just wants to be popular you know with her uh students maybe there's like something else going on but uh this is you know a, a very kind of career attack move i mean look at how she marks up this thing dear jessica solid first attempt please see i can't read the script please see our feedback and resubmit xoxo so first of all like talking to someone like a fucking child just like jesse single says like it's so so like so some of the comments uh your threads felt more like threats uh plus i was wrong I meaning you should write i was wrong because I've been told I shouldn't also because I'm uh, uh, worried about my sales, right? So she's basically saying like, this apology wasn't genuine. Uh, uh, if you really want it to be genuine, let's mark it up in this way. And let's actually show your motivations. You're only apologizing simply because you're scared for yourselves, which is like, honestly, that is probably true. Like, I'm positive that she thinks that she's in the right, but you know, she's not willing to, to stand for that because, uh, you know, everybody has a fucking career right she has a fucking career to tend and this lady has a fucking career to tend okay she wants to be popular she wants to be part of this fucking casino 
right? Um, I, I mean, like, like th- this is th- this is so. What is another one here? I mean, what is there to say? Like, uh, I mean, uh, it's it's just been. It's 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 just been and you know I I basically you know, I, I saw that tweet from Jesse Single um and my response was I retweeted it uh I said uh why is YA publishing especially so PC and so full of virtue signaling answer because the books are marketed to kids and since kids are involved these kids can happily be used as meat shields by liberals to justify all manner of careerism so here's like another careerist uh Tolly Sal's. Uh, Just clues, you have received a beautiful and free gift from the amazing Shia, the scholar. So that was the lady that like marked up her apology in red ink. And so many colleagues of uh, Nina uh, German, this is a gift. Listen and learn to so many who can insist in your growth, which is non-negotiable, especially for anyone in publishing. This is such an obvious, just like a, a power move, right? They're, they're just worried about one thing. This isn't about kids. This isn't about anybody but the adults, right? Um, well, let, let's, let's move past that, right? So I saw this and I was like, all right, let me just see what's going on. What kind of bullshit these people are, are, are tweeting about this disrupt text bullshit. And sure enough, eventually something does really trigger me. Um, and so this, this lady, another YA author, uh, Ellen, oh hell no, is her name. Um, in the midst of all this, her tweet is, this year we should do a worst classic books ever list and why they should not be taught in K through 12 schools anymore because they legit cause kids to hate reading. Number one on the list, Moby Dick. It literally kills brain cells. Call me Ishmael, call me dead. Because this book killed me and I am now back from the dead, haunting your English teacher ass for making me read this god-awful, pretentious, loathsome, time-sick of a book, and I hate you forever. So, so th- this is, this is literally her critique of Moby Dick, quote, it literally kills brain cells, right? This, this is the writer, right? For kids. I, I hear Cookie even through the headphones. Um, Number two worst classic book ever, Catcher in the Rye. Well, Catcher in the Rye is very much overrated, so uh, I wouldn't mind getting it off the list. Um, but no, my number three is The Adventures of Huck Finn. Can we stop with the racist books already? So literally, this this, this writer, right, that I assume she also reads books, um, she read Huck Finn ostensibly, right? Who knows, right? We can't take anything for granted anymore in 2021 after what happened to the fucking Capitol building guys. Um, she might, you know, who knows if she read Huck Finn, but ostensibly she read Huck Finn. And after reading it, her, her conclusion was, uh, 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 that is a racist book. It is a racist narrative. It is actually pushing for slavery and racism and so on and so forth. Um, like, like, do you have to take anything that she says seriously? Uh, 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 can, can she possibly have anything of value to say about writing period right can she have anything of value to say about children my guess is probably not um and you know i i saw this i got triggered i, I retweeted her, her bullshit and i wrote this is from a writer whose critique amounts to quote it literally kills brain cells and a bio that ends with trite pining for, quote, a decent bagel outside of NYC. So uh, I'm not going to subject you to it. Uh, I went to her personal website. I looked at the books that she wrote. I looked at some uh, excerpts. Uh, I also looked at her bio. You know, uh, how would she describe herself? And literally, like, she said that she was uh, f- that she's from New York City. I don't know if she's born in New York City, but she said that she's from New York City. And uh, 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 she now lives in like somewhere else and she's still on the quest for a decent bagel right outside of New York. And that's such, you know, like to anybody that knows like anything about like these, these kinds of imagery, it's like it's such a trite way to like channel the uniqueness of New York City. And it's such a kind of like fucking like shit lib way of doing so. I mean, she's a shit lib like uh, I'm not going to click on her face, but she has a face max that says Biden Harris. So um 
like everything about like and even the way that she like talks about like you know moby dick like it kills brain cells literally i'm dead call me dead because literally like it's so not clever right like it's it's just a bunch of people like like i said earlier right when um we, we talk about this like as a you know, uh, as a capital intensive subculture, think about all the fucking money that goes into it and literally like almost no value of any sort is produced. This is such a fucking time su- suck, such a fucking capital suck. People are bitching about where Bitcoin is going. Fuck that. Look at this shit. Look at all the money in here. This is a completely worthless thing. It, 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 and all these like fucking tokens just get released again and again and again and again. Like, She's not here to produce works of art. She's not here to produce, you know, uh, uh, works of dialectic. She's not here to even have well-written tweets that are memorable. It's just memorable for being stupid. Talk, stop, like, and don't do this shit like, you know, dumb was a bag of bricks. Let's fucking get past the fucking similes and let's say that this lady, she's not dumb as a bag of bricks. She is a fucking brick, okay? We're going to go past simile. We'll go straight to metaphor because we want to get to the crux of the issue, right? She is a fucking brick, okay? And to il- illustrate this, um, I-, I pulled out, like, this is just kind of like at a- 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 random, right? So I wrote, I mean, just contrast her total dearth-, dearth of wit to even one throwaway monologue from Captain Ahab. So I was like, you know, what are some, you know, what are some passages in Moby Dick uh, that I could, like, uh, come to and pull out, all right? That sort of, you know, uh, proves everything that I'm saying. Um, and this is just what I came with since we're not going to get to Dorothy Parker since the, the whole thing is like 30 pages long and I don't want to do this for another like three hours. Um, I guess this is going to have to be our palate cleanser. So this is from uh, Moby Dick. Um, this is where Captain Ahab, uh, this is before they officially, I guess, start hunting the whale, although I guess they're always kind of, um, uh, on the lookout for that. Um, uh, so uh, Ahab is uh, one of his like famous kind of like little uh, uh, monologues, right? He he has this like uh, a soliloquy. And uh, this is also around the part of the book where uh, I think it's like somewhere like in the, the first 50 chapters or so where you have like some parts that very much are written as a play. They feel like a play, right? So uh, you're, you're here supposed to imagine like Ahab sort of like, you know, looking out uh, uh, at the ocean, right? Um, by himself, like, like coming up with this idea right um and you just ask yourself can kids get something from this all right if we have nikki barnes right who was who was a you know a a black uh heroin dealer from harlem uh who who died in uh, 2012 uh went on um uh, uh you know witness protection started a new life uh he said in prison he was reading moby dick and he said that growing up as a drug dealer, always like, you know, looking for, uh, you know, the next way to make money, right? The next person to kill, the next target, the next anything. That struck him as very much like what happened with, um, uh, Moby Dick, right? Like what, 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 what Captain Ahab was doing, like the pursuit of money is the same kind of self-destructive pursuit, especially in the kinds of ways that Nikki Barnes would do it. As um, uh, uh, the pursuit of uh, the great white whale by, by Captain Ahab. Okay. This is a guy from the streets. This is someone that is also in rap songs. You're telling me that if you want to be inclusive and diverse, there really are no kids that you have that are in poverty and may be at risk of possibly going to prison. I, 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 I fucking went to court uh, for kids. I've done that before. Well, once before. Um, I'm sure, uh, uh, Ellen has had plenty of kids that were on the cusp of being in prison at some point or, you know, whatever the equivalent, uh, ju- juvenile detention, whatever the equivalent would be. Um, you're telling me that you can't in a thoughtful manner. E- okay. If you don't want, if you don't want kids to read all of Moby Dick, cause it is fucking hard. Fine. You're telling me, you're telling me that you can't read this paragraph. Show them the documentary, a uh, great documentary, by the way, uh, with Nikki Barnes, Mr. Untouchable. And make that connection. Watch him make that connection and have your kids connect to that. You really have no fucking inner creativity as a teacher. Oh, well, maybe she is a teacher. Maybe I've actually spoken too soon. Maybe she's not a teacher at all. But really, like, you're, you're telling me you can't make that connection. You're telling me that no, nobody, nobody will find this interesting. Anyway, 
a palate cleanser. L l let's read this. Ahab is, is is on the deck. He's looking out into the ocean, I believe. Um, and and this is this is his uh, monologue. Twas not so hard a task. I thought to find one stubborn at the least, but my one cogged circle fits into all their various wheels, and they revolve. Or, if you will, like so many anthills of powder, they all stand before me and either match. Right? This is how he sees his objective. Anthills of powder, they all stand before me and I their match. And then he says, Oh, hard, that to fire others, the match itself must needs be wasting. What I've dared, I've willed, and what I've willed, I'll do. You're telling me kids have no fucking relation to this today? You're telling me there's no kid in your classroom that is going through exactly this, right? This kind of thing, like, should I do this? Should I not? They're constantly facing these kinds of existential questions, especially if you're teaching anywhere inside a fucking city, okay? This is a constant question. Everything ahead of me is like anthills of powder. I am their match. I know what I'm capable of. But to fire others, for me to get that objective, the match itself, me, that needs wasting. I need to die along with it. You're telling me you can't connect this to your fucking kids? What I've dared, I've willed, and what I've willed, I'll do. They think me mad, Starbuck does, but I'm demoniac. I am madness maddened. What a, you know, it, I've always loved that turn of phrase. I am madness maddened. That wild madness that's only calm to comprehend in self. Imagine that. Like you could, you like I, I've seen, I've seen uh, rap songs that have uh, lines like this: "Wild madness that's only calm to comprehend itself." Right. This is part of the culture. This isn't just like random bullshit. Cookies out here. Come on, cookie. Why don't you show show yourself? You're so beautiful. Um. Anyway, uh, a little hard to concentrate like this. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but that wild madness that's only calm to comprehend itself. That's such a beautiful image. And it's exact, it's exactly, it's exactly that quest. It's exactly that fucking, you know, that, that Nicky Barnes, you know, disconnect between what he, you know, perhaps truly knows what is meaningful in life and, you know, the decisions that he keeps making. The prophecy was that I should dis be dismembered, and I, I lost this leg. I now prophesy that I will dismember my dismemberer. Now then be the prophet and the fulfiller one. That's more than ye, ye great gods everywhere. I laugh and hoot at ye, ye cricket players, ye pugilists, ye deaf burks and blind bendigos. I will not say a schoolboy's do to bullies. Take some of your own size, don't pummel me. No, you've knocked me down and I am up again, but ye have run and hidden. Come forth from behind your cotton bags. I have no long gun to reach ye. Come, Ahab's compliments to ye. Come and see if you can swerve me. Swerve me? Ye cannot swerve me, else ye swerve yourselves. Man has ye there. Swerve me. The path to my fixed purpose is laid with iron rails, whereon my soul is grooved to run. Over unsounded gorges, through the rifled hearts of mountains, under torn speds, unerringly I rush. Not an obstacle, not an angle to the iron way. What's the iron way? The iron rails. Wow, look at that connection. Did she fucking notice that? Of course she didn't. You're telling me you can't connect this to your kids? You're telling me you can't connect this to your goddamn kids? But 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 no, but no. You 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 want to subject them to these adult fucking culture wars that have absolutely nothing to do with them. They only have to do with one thing only, which is your careerist fucking instincts. How can you be this fucking like subservient like wretch for for organized capital? And how can I do that without creating any kind of, you know, it would be one thing if you'd be creating cultural objects of any value. But judging by her fucking Twitter feed and judging by the way that she phrases her own bio, I, I, I doubt there's much there to go on. Okay. This is a great fucking passage. Anyone that reads it and doesn't get it, guess what? You could do it again and again and again. You could eventually figure this out. You could eventually figure out why this is such a great fucking packet, uh, passage. I don't have to explain shit to you. 
I didn't explain that much. I explained enough. Now the supports you don't get. Think about them. Because there is greatness here that you're not going to get if you fucking rot your brain like these people. A- anybody that says that this is about kids, this is about like, you know, think of the teens. This is this is teens as a meat shield, right? For adult career instincts. A material analysis of history will, will uh, predict this. We see this happening. And of course, we always need to get beyond the material analysis of history as well. When we discuss things like art, we need to understand whether or not these are cultural objects worth saving. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Moby Dick is a cultural object worth saving. Huck Finn, cultural object worth saving. Ellen O. Hell no. A cultural object not worth saving. Uh, and uh, hopefully her... Uh, a Twitter feed implodes and she's banned for some reason. Maybe she'll, maybe, she, maybe she's going to dogpile on that, uh, a lady that got shot and maybe, uh, the bloodlust is going to turn off Jack and, uh, she's going to, uh, she's going to, um, have her account banned, hopefully. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever dream of like wishing cancellation upon anybody, even really, really dumb fucks. Um, oh, so yeah, and I was just like looking at like disrupt text, like, uh, like what, like what is, like what is the latest? What is this about? Um, oh, so this, like, and that's the thing, like, the second you have, like, garbage that is clearly so motivated for the wrong reasons, like, uh, hashtag disrupt texts, you're eventually gonna get the opposite. So you have this account here, Department of, uh, Wokeness Studies. Um, and you know, like it, it's probably like, I bet if I click on it, it's going to be some sort of like conservative ass feed. Um, Uh, I mean, I haven't seen anything too much, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is just like one of like the many conservative um, uh, uh, like accounts are popping up because like disrupt text is so easy to fucking like dunk on. I mean, if if Ellen O uh, oh hell no is any in any way representative of that, like it's so easy to just fucking just like obliterate um, just by talking about it for like five fucking minutes. Um, and, you know, he's saying, but disrupt text is literally a, uh, about saying that left wing American cultural capital is the only thing anyone should be exposed to, um, which I just, I guess it's, it's kind of true. Right. I mean, we're, we're talking about a very specific thing. Right. Left wing American cultural capital. Right. There, There is like in a lot of these like movements, a lot of these things that are, uh, you know, perceived as, you know, like kind of like global liberalism. A lot of it is just like American cultural imperialism right and imperialism kind of i guess more generally um you know if, if you start bringing blm shit to like fucking lithuania where they have like or czechoslovakia where they have virtually no black people and you do these kinds of marches um and you do this and you do that um you're just you're you're, you're just doing it for yourself right you're not you're not there to actually make any kind of changes you're not there to matter in any way right this is just you taking your uh, wokeness from america um and just exporting it to you know uh, let's go fucking slumming in czechoslovakia or whatever the fuck these people go um uh so a, a lot of this just strikes me as like very kind of specific it's also like you know it tries to not be white but it's also very white in the sense that this is ultimately going to be the bottom line this is the bottom line of who um uh 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 you know, like who gets in, who gets out, right? Uh, that that's not really going to change too much. Um, see if there's anything. Uh, let's see, top disrupt text. This latest stuff is always like these. Um, some disrupt text recommended titles: three novels to focus on themes related to coming of age, cultural identity, justice, and the bonds of family and community. Uh, I read. A book by Louise Erdrich. Uh, it was, it was, it was actually, uh, it was actually pretty fucked up. Um, I think she's maybe, uh, I think is the right person. Uh, maybe you guys could look it up. Uh, she is, uh, I think Native American or probably Native American. Um, if it's not her, it must be somebody else that wrote this book and it was supposed to be kind of like about, you know, I guess Native American life in America. And you literally had like a Native American character just like 
literally dropping on his fucking knees, crying over like the earth being exploited, you know, praying uh, to the sky, which um, I mean, I sh- maybe, un- you know, uh, I don't know enough about contemporary Native American religion to know how often something like that happens. But um, it struck me as a little bit, uh, a, 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 a little bit of a stereotype um, that I was just surprised that people were able to get away with like real stereotypes. People like always get away with, but um, uh, the, the bullshit that, you know, is just things that people want to like, you know, build their careers on. Oh, did you guys see her? Um, anyway, I, I, I got, I got, uh, nothing else. I'm not interested enough to see this disrupt tech shit. I mean, you, you got, you guys got enough. Like it's, there's like whether, whether or not, uh, disrupt tax is all total bullshit there. It's been used by enough bullshit so far that we've seen that, uh, this is, this is something that I'd be very, very wary of, even if like, you know, fundamentally conceptually, I guess I wouldn't be against like, you know. I'm not, I'm not against having more equal representation. I want there to be, you know, uh, diversity, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, but, you know, much more so than that. I want a much more kind of profound, uh, diversity and not just a racial diversity, which we never get. Um, let me see if there's anything here. Uh, and if not, uh, I will call it quits. Let's see what we got. Um, why don't I see my previous comments? Did this split in? This didn't split into two videos, did it? Um, anyway, uh, Andrew Geary, books aren't there to communicate, but to satisfy my emotional and financial wants and needs. Uh, this is true, like, to, to the extent that, you know, people have, like, niche interests, video games, whatever, uh, reading like fantasy novels is just kind of that, right? Like it's just like if you're a YA, a YA a reader, you're just like one one of these types. Um, and uh, you know, if, if you're one of these types, if there is a type that you could be put under, well, there is now an entire industry that can, you know, uh, crop up around you to to deliver that to you, right? Which is why, like, I've been so kind of um, you know, even something like the Patreon model, even if ultimately I will uh, come to be dependent on something like that. Uh, d- down the road like like when you think about it like it's kind of scary how people are able to just fine-tune all of their like media consumption where like oh i love you know podcasts about uh internet culture that deals with uh woke bullshit i'm gonna listen to and give money to and it's like someone that's gonna help you with that uh i said that because jesse single has one related to that which i enjoy uh his podcast um it's called blocked and reported um so uh there, there there's that there's like you know people like I remember one time I was uh, sending around uh, one of my books to an, to like agents and there was one agent that, that said that she has a strong preference to read books that are, that take place in one building uh, over the course of like a short period of time. And there was like some other like really like weird, sp- like the fact that human beings exist out there, they're like, oh yeah, I want to, uh, I love reading books. I love literature. And, uh, as an agent, you know, uh, when you're an agent, you're probably going to get tons of books and you have to read a lot of stuff that you maybe don't really like and are just objectively bad. Um, you could like sort of, you know, like you could, you could sort of like fashion your palette in such a way where like, oh, only, only these kinds of books can, you know, I, I will look at. Um, I, I find, I find that balkanization really kind of fucking disturbing because, uh, it's so, it, it's very hard to compete with. It's hard for people like me to compete with it because, you know, I guess there's an audience for the things that I talk about, but I don't really play on very obvious tribal affinities all that much. Um, and, um, uh, uh, being able to like satisfy someone's like really highly emotional niche desires, like those kinds of books or a certain kind of video game or, you know, a certain kind of a movie or TV series. Um, if you could just sort of like in a Patreon model or, or, or whatever, just like these like little micro transactions, just curate your own fucking personal echo chamber. Um, 
and it's it, it, and it's it, and and it's of the type where like you get like a very specific kind of hit of dopamine over and over and over again. That's very hard to short, short circuit for most people. Most people can't even you know. Uh, uh, I, I've definitely had times when I stay on my phone a lot, uh, like too much, where like feels like a waste of time. I don't I don't really do that anymore. But um, like people have a hard time with their fucking phones. People have a hard time with like not eating, right? Because uh, you know most people are fat as opposed to skinny in America. Um, most people have so many problems with like self control, and if you tell them, "Hey, this thing that everybody tells you is like intellectually important and good and righteous and this and this and that," uh, we're gonna package it in this four ninety nine thing that if you pay us, you could get ahead of it every single week. And then somebody else, this other thing that you think is so intellectually rigorous and important and wonderful and whatever, now we're gonna coax you in some other way to give us five dollars, and everybody gets fucking five dollars. You know, maybe eventually some of you guys will be giving me five dollars, and everything is just as balkanized, you know, a uh, uh, shithole. Um, I find that very scary. Uh, I, I I don't like how uh, uh, pe- people will. Uh, 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 be incentivized to go with the thing that feels the best, that makes them, you know, just, just feel good. Uh, the thing that is easiest, the thing that is most addictive, right? The thing that is most addictive. Um, I've had to be very conscious of my like media consumption. Like I have to make sure that, Hey, Alex, like read books every fucking day. Don't just read articles. Don't just like do this or that. Read books. Like al- always have. You know, uh, your toe where it belongs. Um, but, you know, uh, and this kind of model, uh, uh, you know, as, as nice as it is to be able to like eventually, you know, be someone that, you know, could be independent on this model. Keep in mind that alongside that, uh, we're just kind of given, giving into this, uh, you know, sort of like, I guess, wider macro, um, you know, uh, addiction, right? This kind of, you know, woke capital bullshit that doesn't, that doesn't get anywhere, right? We just get every time that something balkanizes, right? Anytime that you have a new fissure point, you know, you just produce another capital intensive subculture that produces nothing of value. We just produce these fucking worthless tokens that are not worthless to enough people. So therefore there's a price on it. So therefore people will buy it. So therefore, you know, libraries will buy it. Uh, uh, schools will buy it. And guess what? Now you're a famous author. Um, 